432. Hey students, how you doing today? Mr. Elliot here. Today we're doing distance formula. Uh, what is today's date? Today is March. Should be watching this on March 15, but this is officially the lesson for March 16. Um, so we talked about in class on Wednesday the 15th. Uh, we, we I gave you what the you know I gave you the distance formula and talked about where it came from. So now I'm just going to do some examples on how to use that distance formula. Um, there's forwards problems and there's backwards problems. Here's forward problem when they give you the two coordinates and you got to figure out the distance. Um, for people that struggle, you might want to label these. One of these points should be labeled just plain old x y. And then the other point would be x1, y1. So if I plug these two points into this distance formula, square root of, um, in the first parentheses is 3 minus negative 2 quantity squared plus uh, negative 4 minus 8 quantity squared. Um, and then you do some math magic. Uh, this becomes 3 plus 2, that becomes 5. 5 squared, 25, plus negative 4 minus 8, negative 12, negative 12 squared, 144. These add up to 1 root 169, and the square root of 169 is 13. Hey, it's the perfect problem, an answer that gives you a nice, happy, non- decimally type answer, a number that you actually know the square root of. I bet you example two won't do that. Um, example two, d equals, same thing. Label this one x, y, label this one x, one, y, one. Or you could do it the other way around. This one could be x, y, and this one could be x, one, y, one. It really doesn't matter. Um, negative two minus four quantity squared plus six minus zero quantity squared. Negative 2 minus 4 is negative 36, and when you square negative 36, you get 36. Uh, if 6 minus 0 is 6. If you square it, you get 36. This becomes square root of 72. Um, I don't know the square root of 72 exactly, but I do know how to simplify that. Um, this can become square root 36 times square root of 2 which becomes 6 square root 2. Um, hey, because this involves square roots and simplifying square roots, um, this is going to be four function only, four function calculator only, when you get to that test next week, next Wednesday. You will only be able to use a four function calculator, and it's because of this problem right here. You're going to have to simplify a square root. All right, um, those are forwards problems. I do have one backwards problem for you. And in these ones, uh, instead of you looking for the distance, they give you the distance and then like, and then one and a half, say, of the coordinates. So it'll read like this. I should have written it beforehand. Uh, the distance between 6, 1 and x, comma 8 is 25 um, and you got to find x. So you're going to use the distance formula and plug in all of these things um, and you're going to solve for x. Uh, because I'm looking for this x, I'm going to have this be the x, y point and then this is going to be my x1, comma y1. Um, so D equals, actually, I'm going to write, I'm going to write out the distance formula this time. X minus X1 quantity squared plus Y minus Y1 quantity squared equals D. Now plug it all in. 25 equals the square root of X minus 6. You will still get this, even if you, you switched these around so it was like X, Y, and X1, Y1, you'll still get the same answer but it might be a little bit more work. Um, the other one, x minus 6, so I'd have to go 8 minus 1 quantity squared. And now you just have a little bit of an algebra equation to solve. Um, 
step one, you're going to need to square both sides to get rid of that square root. So 625 equals x minus 6 quantity squared plus 8 minus, oh, I could probably just do that. 8 minus 1, that's 7. 7 squared is 49. And um, if you remember from units ago, because we just squared both sides of the equation, at the end we must perform a check to make sure those answers work. Next step is I'd subtract 49 from both sides, and that becomes, uh, instead of 575, it would be 576 equals x minus 4 quantity, oops, x minus 6 quantity squared. Um, then you square root both sides, and square root of 576, I think it's 24. I, I can check, but I'm not going to. No, wait, should I check? I should check. Elliot's going to check. Uh, let's see, yes, um, 576 square rooted, yeah, it's 24. Um, so this becomes 24, oh, but you just square rooted both sides. So positive negative 24 equals x minus 6, um, which means x equals, uh, we're going to add 6 to both sides, but to both of these. So it's going to be positive 24 plus 6 or negative 24 plus 6 which gives me, um, on one hand, I get 30, um, or on the other hand, I get negative 18. Now, um, these are coordinates, and x coordinates can be positive and they can be negative. So is it possible to get two answers? That's a great question. Let's think about this graphically. You have this point 6, 1. Suppose it's here. And you want the x-coordinate that has a y-value of 8. So we want, we want to figure out like, when will this point here have a value of 8. And this is all about circles, right? And if you draw a circle around this, the distance... Well, let's think. Um, this wasn't 6, 8. This was 6, 1. Sorry about that. So the distance from here to here directly is 7. And if the, we want the distance to be 25, the 25 radius would be way up here. And when you draw that big 24 radius, I, way off the paper, but it looks like I'm going to have an answer here and an answer way over, way over that way in the big positive direction. I guess that would be positive 30. So there can be two answers, but you should still check them, make sure that they both work. Um, Though I'm going to assume they work simply because I'm looking for two answers. I'm looking for two answers. I actually got two answers. So they're probably both going to work. But if I test it out, um, 30 minus 6. Uh, 30 minus 6 is 24. Uh, 24 squared is 476. 476 um, plus this 49. Um, that works out to be... Wait, not 476, it was 576, equals 625. Um, and then it's the square root of that, so it checked out. Um, and if I do negative 18, negative 18 minus 6 is negative 24. When I square that, I'll still get this 576 plus 49. So both of these answers check out. Um, so at the end of the day, my answer is uh, find x. Uh, x could be 30 or it could be negative 18, either one in this particular case. All right, those were backwards problems, and that, my friends, is all I need to show you today. So I hope your distance formula um, homework goes very smoothly. This one, uh, this particular assignment tomorrow is gonna be out of the book. So um, you might wanna bring your Algebra 2 book tomorrow. If not, um, I can tell you right now, you're gonna need, um, if you wanna take pictures, you need to use page 447 um, you're probably going to need 448. Let me let Elliot check for you. Um, 447. 440. Do you need 448? Yeah. So you're going to need 447, 448, 448, uh, 449, and page 459 you only need that page. So if you want to take pictures of these four pages and bring them in tomorrow, that could help you out. 
and Elliot forgot something he wanted to do until just now. When I do distance formula, I don't even do distance formula this way that I taught you. This is how Elliot does distance formula. It goes really fast. This is what I do. Number one, um, when you're subtracting two numbers, you're essentially looking for the distance between them. The distance from 3 to negative 2 is a distance of 5. If you square 5, you get 25. The distance from negative 4 to 8 is 12. And if I square 12, I get 144. So boom, that's my first. When Elliot does distance formula, Elliot starts here, which is essentially this step. And I'm okay if you want to start at this step too. Um, so I'd get here, which would lead me to this root 169, which would lead me to the root 13. If I was going to do number two, Elliot way, the distance from negative 2 to 4 is a distance of 6. 6 squared is 36, plus the distance from 6 to 0 is 6. 6 squared is 36. Boom. So I got root 36 plus 36, which puts me right there. So that's just me saving one step of work. And like I said, you can use that technique if you'd like or not. It's a lot faster, and it's nice. Um, I think that's it for today. I'm going to do a little bit bonus. I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell for people that are still watching. Um, there's no more math. So if you, if you don't want any more math, you should just stop. But I got some cool kind of art I'd like to show you. Um, all right, I've been meaning to show you these for, for a while. Um, check this out. Um, Kyla painted this beautiful painting. Isn't it nice? Um, if you don't, if you're not an organ fan, you could think of this as being an organ smeared all over the, all over the uh, the ground type artwork. And um, the teachers at, at her school, they like to take pictures of them doing the art to prove that yes, your daughter really did this. And check it out. Here it is. She's making that painting. She's smiling, and she's got a she's got a paintbrush in her hand. Anyway, that's some Kyla art. And then yesterday, when I picked up Kyla yesterday, check this out. Oh yeah, isn't that lovely? Isn't it amazing how my two and a half year old wrote "To Daddy" from Kyla on it? I don't think she wrote it. But anyway, that's just some nice art, and you'll see this art up on my wall. Thanks for, uh, if you if you took this extra minute and a half out of your life to do the show and tell, thank you very much. I hope you have yourself a beautiful day, and I'll uh, talk to you soon. Bye-bye.